Yeah. Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing workshop leather number 16. So what's that one going to be all about? Well, it's titled John's been spending his money and uh, it always makes me feel quite ill when that has to happen but it's happened so we're going to take you through some of the stuff that I've been buying and getting into the shop and the majority of that is going to be around workshop organisation. So I mentioned that in a few videos ago around just the general state of the workshop and can't find anything, tripping over stuff, need to do something quite drastic in terms of replanning, reorganising the workshop. So I took some inspiration actually from one of my channels that I subscribe to and he subscribes to me so that's Ian. Ian Matthews and he has a, a very similar challenge uh, albeit on a, on a slightly bigger scale in his workshop and uh, on the very video that he called me out for my organisation stuff he, he actually at the start of that video he, he lit a couple of candles out in his garden and he said we've all got to get used to lighting candles over this winter in the UK with the threatened power shortages and everything else so I, I, I took a bit of inspiration from Ian on that and I thought maybe he was trying to tell me something so I came in here lit a couple of candles turned all the lights out and it works in I couldn't see any of the rubbish in here at all once I'd done that so great tip thank you we've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole guys so I'm gonna get through and you'll see I've put stuff stuff and more stuff I'm keeping you all in suspense as to what I'm planning and what I've bought so without any more sort of babbling I'm just gonna start getting stuff on the bench I'll bring you in and I'll show you what we're thinking about and then we'll take a bit of a tour around the workshop and I'll talk about kind of some of the plans that I've got for reorganisation so and I'll show some of those in video but it, you know putting shelves and things like that up isn't the most riveting viewing but I'll, I'll try and do some of that on a bit of video because while I'm doing that I'm not doing anything else so you'll be missing out if I don't put a video up so I'll bring you at the bench in a minute and we'll crack on. Thanks Ian. Okay, probably don't need to do a lot of explanation here. Three separate plastic storage items, all from China without any shadow of a doubt. First one being, I've just changed my spindle over, as you know, to ISO 30, so I bought this unit that for some bizarre reason seems to be at least three times as high as it actually needs to be, and I've not yet really figured out why, but it was cheap enough and it's got more than enough holes in it for probably the amount of ISO 30 tooling that I'm going to have certainly for the next few years so that's the first bit I bought one of these which is a proper unit for actually I've actually put the wrong thing in there you don't use it for a chuck but for a ER32 collet type chuck or anything that you're using spanners on to tighten them up this is the proper way to do it not trying to do it the way I do it at the moment by putting the mill into low gear and you know tightening up against the friction in the in the gear ratio so the R32 collet rack holder far more positions than I've got collets for at the moment which allows me to future expand I have got a couple, most of my collets are metric, I have got a couple of Imperial ones so I'll now be able to, as I need to over time, add to my collet range and even go for some duplicates of certain ones, so that'll be good. And then finally an end mill storage rack with, I forget how many holes, it's got 300 and some odd holes in it and all by different shank sizes and it is marked on 16mm shank, 12mm shank, 10, 8 six and four so I, there's not enough holes in there to cope with the amount of end mills I've got so what I'm going to do is um, take the end mills out of their current location which is in the limb bins up behind the bench that I struggle to get to at the minute put a certain selection and range of end mills in here and then whatever I've got left over is all going to get bagged up and put in a safe place for when I need to replenish anything at some point in the future because if I've not got enough options with 370 odd options in here then I'm getting something wrong somewhere so that's the planning behind that 
So why have I showed you all of these first? Well, I'm kind of going to do this area by area around the shop. So we're now going to move to the area of the shop where I'm planning on putting all of this stuff and talk you through how I'm going to go about it and why. Okay, so I'm trying to do some slightly wider angle shots for you guys to give you a bit more idea of what I'm up against. So this is the spot between my Harrison M300, so this is the tail stop, not even at full at full retraction. That's kind of the end of the bed there, so this is where the tail stop handle comes to at full extension. This is my mill, and it's roughly in the centre of the table at the moment, and the distance between those two handles at the minute is, I don't know, six inches, maybe seven, eight inches tops. If I was to wind the table fully this way, there would be almost zero clearance between the two, so quite a tight bit of space. In this area down on the floor, I don't know whether you can see it, is my dehumidifier unit, and I pull that out when it's running, so it's pushing air into the workshop. Behind that is my DIY toolbox, which is just a mess. I've got stuff all piled in the top, and it's full of swarf, and it's just a disaster. And so that's coming out. We're going to take that out and put it somewhere. I'm going to go to Ian for a bit more inspiration on this. He'll probably have to go outside and then come back in and I'm going to have to play Toolbox Tetris. Behind that I've got this thin section of kind of wall that juts out. This is where it's double brick like a pillar that's got a girder sat on top of it. And up on that girder is my crane that when I first set the workshop up, I was really quite pleased with having a crane on a yellow girder because it looked like an industrial application. I've never used it. Complete waste of space. Really, this all gets in the way. It doesn't get in the way at the moment, but it would get in the way of me doing anything on this central piece of wall here. And that's why all I've got on it is my lifting straps. And I've had to put a coil of copper pipe up there because I couldn't find anywhere else to put it. So we're going to take all of that off, we're going to take the crane down and put that in storage for a later date when I'm going to put it onto an A-frame or something similar, and not in this workshop but in a future one. And what we're going to do is make some brackets of some description up on this wall so that we've got what I've just shown you on the bench, my tool holders, my collets, my end mills and also the proper unit for undoing, doing up collet chucks all in one place right next to the milling machine because why not? So then I'll have easy access for tool changes right next to the machine with everything that I need close to hand and also right next to all my centre lathe tooling here. So obviously keeping all my machine tooling together. So that's the plan for this little area of the workshop. So I'm going to move back to the bench now and we'll have a look at what else I've been spending money on. Okay, we're on to our second area. So this used to be my tooling area and my measurement gear area in here. Most of you have seen that before. My surface table and I used to keep my drill indexes and one or two other bits up on top of this one. It's now become my goods inwards and goods outwards area. So every time I buy something that I've not yet got round to, because I've got nowhere else to put it, it ends up getting stacked up here until I've had a chance to do something with it, which is kind of okay. It doesn't impede my access in and out of the shop, but every time I want to get something out of one of these drawers, I've then got to move all of that out of the way, get into here, get what I need, and totally frustrating at times, because there's just not enough room. But with all of that being said, the first thing I want to talk about is this middle box, which I've not even opened yet. It's still in goods in and goods out. And talking of goods out, if I just move the camera a little bit, what do I mean by goods out? Well, down there is my old compressor that is waiting to get chucked in a skip. Next to that is a spare head for my milling machine that I'm never probably going to do anything with at all. So I need to get rid of that because I'm just tripping up over it all over the floor. And just general rubbish all around this area which I'm getting really fed up of. So 
I need to do something different to tidy this whole area up and make it usable space again. So what are we going to do? Well let's talk about this box. So in that box is a steel like Dexian shelving racking unit and I want to use that to store a lot of my chucks, dividing heads, rotary tables, all that kind of thing. At the moment I've got a lot of it crammed into the bottom drawer of the orange drawer unit. Again difficult to get to, not ideal having to bend right down to pick heavy stuff up. So, and I've got other bits scattered around the workshop but anywhere there's a horizontal surface that I can stand something on and I, I want to tidy all that up. So what are we going to do with it? So, we're carrying on with the wide angle theme shots. This is my bandsaw. Right next to that is the surface grinder and again, you know, I'm touching the surface grinder there and that's pretty much overhanging the bandsaw. If I wind the, the table fully to the right on the surface grinder I'm you know, well encroaching on three or four inches over the, over the bandsaw but I can live with that because you're only ever using one at once. That's okay. This thing, <coughs> which is my Taylor Hobson pantograph engraving machine, which is, I wouldn't say perfect, but it's in very good condition other than the fact that the actual spindle unit itself is absolutely shot and it needs a new spindle. Um, seemingly I cannot even give this away. I've tried several times, I've tried advertising, I've tried you know, free to a good home, all sorts of things. I don't use it, I'm never going to use it because I've got my small engraving machine that you see me using so at the time's come I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. This is going to go in the trash unfortunately and it's a crying shame but I don't know what else to do so it's it's just going to go in a skip. Before it goes in a skip I'm going to salvage the bits that are useful to me so any useful bits of bar stock materials, the electric motor, other things that I can reuse at a point in the future will come off it. The rest of it is just going to get hauled in a skip because I'm sick of the thing taking up room in here that I could be using for something else and once that's out of the way that new shelving unit that I've just spoken about will be sliding into that gap next to the draw units so then I've got all my tooling, all my fixturing set up chucks, rotary tables you can see I've got my dividing head and the tailstock currently sat on here, I've got a boring head sat on the table at the back, just yeah it's just not it's not a good way to be working and I want to get all of that put somewhere safe and out of the way so unfortunately this thing's going to get going to get thrown away but I'll be happy once it's gone because I can then move into that space and make much better use of it. So that's the next thing that's going to happen storage wise. Let's move on to what was in the other boxes that you saw on the floor. So what's in this box and this box at the back is a whole load of, I forget its proper name, but it's twin, twin slot, I think they call it, shelving. It's more like what you get in a shop where you screw buttons to the wall that have got sets of two slots in them. And then what's in the smaller box at the bottom is all the kind of shelf supports that click into those twin slots. I've got a whole range of different lengths of wall mounted brackets and a whole range of different lengths of actual shelf supports themselves in the small box. Don't really know how much and what I need yet so I've kind of over ordered a little bit and I've ordered plenty of all different sorts. So the next job then is to try and figure out well where are we going to put those because I've, I've got no wall space left. So we'll have a look around the shop and I'll show you what my thinking is. So this is the bit of the workshop that <coughs> depresses me the most. I spent a lot of time and effort making a really nice bench with my welding gear underneath it and some storage underneath and a really solid bench to work on and I've not been able to get to this bench for the best part of 12 months. Largely because there's been bits of shaper all over it but also bits of milling machine, tins of paint, tins of thinners, grease guns. It's just a pigsty and I hate not having a decent bench space to work on 
I've been confined to using the Black & Decker Workmate for the last 12 months, that's why that's all you've ever seen me working on. I'm tripping up over this thing, I've got no room to move at this end of the workshop. If I want to get something out from under here, I've got to pack all this away, find somewhere else for it to go, and all of that's just got totally frustrating. So I've now got to the point where I've said I need to really need to do something about this. So on the back wall, I've got my draw units. I've got another draw unit the same size as this one on the left hand side that's been kicking around on the floor for about six months because I've got nowhere to actually put it other than kicking around on the floor. So what we're going to do is take off everything that you see on this wall. So all of the draw units, all of the lin bin units at the end. So on that side I've got all my carbide inserts for the lathe. On this side that you probably can't see or can just behind me, I've got all of my end mills currently in lin bins. I've got my oxypropane kit behind me, engraving machine tins of paint, all sorts of rammel, and I just need to get all of that space cleared. So I'm going to clear this entire wall, take everything off it, and I'm going to use that double rack shelving to put shelf, 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 up the back wall, and we're actually, rather than fixing these draw units to the wall, as they currently are, we're going to just sit them on some nice shelves on that racking, which allows me to put the next draw unit that's on the floor down there, up on there as well and make much better use of that wall space here by having more shelves higher up, get all my tins of paint, spray, whatever else it is, up out of the way, off the bench, and just really try and tidy this whole area up, and hopefully put this thing back in the shed next door where it really belongs, and not kicking around and taking space up in here. So that's one area the shelving's going. I'm just gonna pan the camera around momentarily to the left so that you can see the left hand side wall and I'll show you that bit as well. So here's the, we've just been looking at the bench over here, if I come round onto this side I've got my bench vise, belt sander, off hand grinder and another engraving machine that's going to get taken to bits and just used for stock I think. Again, one that I'm struggling to get rid of or do anything with and my pillar drill in the corner but I've got a reasonable amount of wall space on this wall that we're going to fit some more of those shelves to just to try and get more stuff up off the floor off the bench up onto the walls using those shelving units so that's a decent bit of space that I can tap into to hopefully do a bit more organization and get things a bit tidier so that's that bit and then for my final purchases, I'll just bring you back into the bench, or the temporary bench. Okay, so for all the machinists amongst you, you'll be all thinking, oh, thank God, finally, this is more like it. Um, so what we've got here is three Chinese coolant mist units. So one for the lathe, one for the miller machine, and one for the surface grinder, potentially, after some modification to the surface grinder so that's going to be some the content of some upcoming videos as we now i've got my new compressor get some airlines plumbed in and start to get these set up on the three various machines and have a bit of a play with coolant misters cheap as chips pretty sure they're fairly inferior quality but we'll give them a go and see how we get on with them and the other thing we've got here is an Mshaw DRO unit and that's what I'm going to be using for my quill axis on the milling machine and again that will be subject to a future video now I've just made my quill plate I can now start thinking about getting this fixed up to the machine and getting finally a DRO on my quill so I'm really looking forward to well all of this stuff on here looking forward to having a play with the the coolant misters and also getting my DRO installed so yeah all upcoming content in the next few weeks slash months as we dig into these things so I think that's probably it for this leather video um, that's upcoming project content you've seen that I'm gonna have to throw a bit of shelving content up just because while I'm doing that I'm not going to be able to make videos on 
anything else so I'll just do that as a bit of a progress update if I have any goods or bads in terms of the storage shelving units I've bought or the, the twin slot shelving for the walls I'll I'll take you through that just in case anybody else wants to buy something similar and then we'll get stuck into these and also hopefully stay focused on getting the shaper refurb complete as well so that's really the content upcoming for the next few weeks unless anything else comes along in between that we drop onto so with all of that being said I'll bring you back to the board and we'll wrap this blether up okay so there we go guys <clears throat> bit of a, an insight into what's upcoming I hope you're all feeling absolutely sorry for me now not not because of the mess I'm in but just because I've had to spend some money it, it, yeah you know what it's like so we'll be getting on with some of that stuff over the next few weeks um, and I'm trying to make it as interesting as I can and I'll try and split it up with some other stuff in between just so that we don't get three or four weeks solid of John putting shelves up on the wall because I can imagine that's about as interesting as watching paint dry so I'll try and split it up and make it as interesting as I can so I hope you've all enjoyed this blather for, for this month and um, thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along on maybe those that I've just lost and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when hopefully we'll be making something else. <laughs>